Hey, this is a good meeting. <laughs> Where's my file? Whoa, that's okay. Go. I'll go back to your new room. Click back. Click back in Word. Click back in your Word document. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had, for whatever reason, I had to do this a couple of times. Go back to share and try it again down there. There you go. Sometimes you just have to go back and forth a couple times. So I need to. Okay. There's no story. We're sharing. I don't know how to banana. put this on mute. Um, if I could have everybody's attention, some, somebody had asked about putting it on mute. If you could all, on the lower left hand corner is a uh, mute button. If you could mute, as long as you're not speaking, that would be super helpful. I thought you were trying to do that. Good afternoon, everybody. Let's see. This is a tremendous response we have so far. Um, as you enter, please make sure you have a muted microphone. This is going to be a learning experience for a lot of us, including myself. Uh, right now, we have a limit of 100 participants we can allow in here. So we're quickly approaching that, which is amazing. Uh, on the bottom of your screen, you should see a mute option. So you want to be sure you do that during the meeting. Um, if we can figure out some questions and answers later on, we'll do that. Um, if not, you can also add a chat. And the chat function, you can add questions in the chat function. We'll take questions that way as well as we go through this. Um, there's some features here that I'm working through, trying to catch up to everyone that's trying to get added here. And we're able to exceed 100, I see. So we're good there. Um, I see I've got to add them manually, which is taking some time here. So we ask you keep your videos off. I believe my video should be off. Um, I've got my screen shared. You can see the agenda as we go through. But again, as I add, you make sure that you're muted when you come in. Distracting for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So I'll get started here. So um, we're going to record this. Um, we're going to see how this works to uh, save it and then post it somewhere for those that couldn't be participants in the meeting. Um, we hope to do this continually throughout our school closure to keep everyone updated and as best we can in real time. Um, 
hopefully by the end of today you'll have an idea of some of the things we had to go through to uh, understand what our direction needed to be and what our options were uh, so that we can best prepare for our kids. Um, right now uh, we have essential staff working as defined by what the governor allowed. Uh, that's administration is here, cafeteria staff is preparing meals in both buildings. We have technology staff getting devices ready and helping maintain operations. We have our business staff operating as normal, well, as normal as she can considering the, the situation. And we have a few custodial here part-time just to help make sure our buildings are, are, uh, are functioning as normal. Uh, our office staff is pretty limited, so if you're calling looking for people, you may not get them. So we ask you to understand that, that um, we have limitations within our office staff. You have secretarial staff available and working at home. Um, email is the best way to contact people for the most part, but we do have the availability to uh, get messages by phone sent directly to us through our email, so we'll see those as well. Uh, Governor Wolf yesterday continued the, the school closure on an indefinite basis uh, through at least the end of April, so we do not anticipate returning to school prior to April 30th. Uh, what that means for us is really no change right now for our, our, our planning. Uh, so I know that that can cause some confusion. Uh, Again, if you haven't muted yet, please mute your microphone as you enter. That really would be helpful. Uh, we don't need anyone to unmute right now, just so that there's no distracting noises in the background, as I know. Uh, again, we're, we're gonna be pretty, pretty much as is for our current plans to restart on Thursday. Nothing's gonna change what we're doing now. Um, we can continue to do, so everything we're, every, operation we have going related to lunch and what we're doing to get the technology out, uh, we're, we're still able to do so. Um, I did see today that Cameron County um, had their status changed to the whole entire county as a stay-at-home district, or a stay-at-home county, excuse me. Um, so they are, have a few more restrictions than what we have right now. Um, so when it comes to our meal planning, we're going to, as you know, we are uh, currently delivering meals via our bus routes across the district each day. We got to over 500 meals on Friday. Today we're in the 480 range, uh, which is a great accomplishment knowing that we have about 600 kids. So we're serving kids that are, you know, birth to age five, as well as kids that are students as well. So we're permitted to do that, which is great. Uh, as long as we have staff that are able and willing to do so, we're gonna, we're gonna keep feeding kids as long as we possibly can. Uh, we don't know what the future holds. We're hopefully gonna not get hit hard with this COVID-19 virus, but we're gonna do our best we, as we can to, to maintain our normal food distribution. We do have some alternate plans kind of in the works if we do have to pull back a little bit, but we'll make people aware of that if and when that does happen. Um, something that you may see starting this week, uh, we need a, a signature from each household as a permission to participate in the, um, the, the meal program. And that's something that our, our federal government requires. So if you haven't seen that, you may see, a, you see that as part of your delivery. Um, if someone has their TV on in the background, make sure you, you have your microphone muted. We don't all hear that, please. He has any regrets telling Um, and just one other thing I wanted to mention, over Easter, we'll have a more limited uh, meal delivery. We're not going to be delivering meals on that Friday and Monday over Easter break. Um, assuming our school calendar does not change, we would still plan to deliver on, on that Tuesday. Uh, so right now, um, in our administrative group, we're trying to finalize our continuity of education plan as to how, that's what PDE is going to call it. Uh, we need to provide uh, the Department of Education a plan of what we're going to do uh, across our district, across our grade levels, uh, to provide education to our kids. Um, it was kind of laid out to us. We had three options. One option was doing nothing. Uh, none of us felt that that was appropriate. Uh, another option was to do more review and uh, re review and uh, enrichment 
uh, which we're doing a portion of that. That's kind of what you started this week with the activities that we sent out for our supplemental learning materials. Um, there'll be a few grade levels working on that. Um, and then the, the planned instruction, which the majority of our kids will be involved with, with planned instruction, which means we're gonna continue on in our fourth nine weeks as best we can, as normal as we can, um, given the means that we have available to us. Uh, so when we looked at that, we really talked and debated for a while as to a consideration of where we want our kids at the end of the year. Uh, what do we want them to be able to do? Um, you know, assuming, you know, all these kids are gonna move on to the grade level. We want them starting the 2020 school year off on a positive. We wanna be able to finish them to a certain point with their instruction. So understanding where the teachers wanna get them at the end of the year is gonna be a consideration. Um, in doing so, we have to understand that um, we have limited internet capacity in our district. Um, even you folks and all of us really that have any internet, it's gonna be spotty at times. If anyone on DSL, it's not the best service. If there's gonna be glitches in the, the DSL service. Um, if you're using your cellular data, uh, there, there's gonna be issues with your cellular data at times. It doesn't always work. Um, we, unfortunately, we're not in a great place when it comes to consistent internet coverage. So that's a major consideration for us when we have to plan our instruction. Um, another consideration is our seniors. Uh, we want them to, to get out of here in the best shape possible so that we're not uh, holding back from any of their plans. Uh, we know most of them are on their way towards earning the accomplishments they work towards to uh, get their diploma. So many of them have met requirements and exceeded the state requirements for sure. So we feel many of them are well on their way to getting their diploma. It's just a matter of what we need to have them accomplish in the last nine weeks in order for them to graduate. Uh, <clears throat> what we have planned across the grade levels is gonna be a little bit different depending on what level you're at. So at the high school level, we have kids earning credits. So that's a consideration. Uh, we have ninth through 12th graders, they earn credits towards the graduation, towards their transcript. They continue on from us. So we've got to plan a little bit more rigorously with them where we may have some more flexibility in the fourth through eighth grade levels. And yet even more flexibility in the third grade levels. Um, however, those levels are probably more difficult to implement instruction when you have such a variety of capabilities with internet across our district. Uh, so starting uh, this week, you may have already seen uh, contact from your, your teachers. Uh, they're, they're ramped up, ready to go, uh, just ready to start on Thursday. Uh, I think a lot of them are really excited. They miss you guys. They really miss the kids. They miss seeing the kids here for sure. Uh, if you have not received the contact, uh, there's a possibility we don't have the information in our system, so please call either building um, on, April, on April 2nd. If you haven't heard from somebody as, a, as your teachers are getting in touch with people, if you haven't heard from anyone by April 2nd, please call one of our buildings. 817-130 uh, is, is the phone number. Uh, for all those with uh, IEPs and GIPs, Mrs. Burns will be in touch. Um, we'll, we're going to have to alter some processes with how we connect with parents and students to make sure we're providing kids everything they deserve uh, at all levels. So she'll be in touch. And if you have specific questions, please do contact her. Uh, we, we know this is a trying time for all kids. Um, and I think there's a lot of concerns. And I know I can speak from our household. It, it gets a little rambunctious at times because you're cooped up together for a while. And um, it, it seems very crowded at times, I can say that. Uh, but some kids are going to struggle um, being at home for this long without any social interaction. I think every parent I come in contact with, whether it be through school or, you know, in passing on the street, um, of course, it's within six, not within six feet distance, of course. Um, they, they talk about their kids struggling, um, not in having that social interaction. So we do, we still do have our, our student assistance program up and running. If that's a need, you can call either building uh, to connect with the right people there. Uh, we had a meeting today with our uh, CTC superintendents and with Mr. Young. Um, that's even more of a, a challenge to understand how we can best provide instruction to our CTC kids when we think about how much of a hands-on situation you have in those classrooms. Uh, Mr. Young has kind of put together a plan um, and he needs your help if you're a CT stu CTC student. Uh, you first need to check your Gmail account that you have set up to the CTC to make sure you, you've been contacted by your teacher. If you have problems contacting, definitely call us. Uh, but for the seniors, you've met your hourly requirement. It's a matter of, of finishing up what you need to finish up related to your career portfolio. Um, and for the juniors and sophomores, your, your instruction is going to continue. 
Uh, so that'll be connected through email at first, and that'll get progressively more intense as we as we progress here through the month. Um, NACTI exams are a big concern. I, I saw some concerns on Facebook with how we can take our NACTI exams. Um, there's some questions that they're waiting for at the CTC to best understand how they can do that. Um, that's something that you guys have worked towards for three years. We promote that as a significant accomplishment. And uh, we want the kids to be able to earn their, their NACTI certifications. Uh, however, we can't do it in person. You know, and you know, that presents quite a problem. So, you know, if there's a point in time in the future where the, the schools open up, that's going to be an easier solution. If we can't open up, that's something he's got to work through and he'll be in contact with the seniors. Um, as we go through, I'm going to slow down for a second. Oh, I see there's no chat box. So what did I do? <laughs> this is my first setup for a meeting. Um, yeah, uh, there was supposed to be a way where you guys could raise your hands and we have a couple on use that way to. Oh, I see someone has their. Oh, I see you can raise your hands. Perfect. So right now I want to add. Oh, I'm going to point to people um, by name, or I can unmute them myself. Yeah. Actually, that'll yeah. work out. Okay. If you have a specific question, anything I've asked or anything I've addressed so far, I'm going to. I know we've got a huge list of people here. We'll try to work through 168 of you. That's amazing. So I'm going to start with the first one I see as I'm scrolling through here with their hand raised. No, everyone's hand went down. That was up. <laughs> so I have a couple of the reading. Yeah. Uh, we do have a couple questions here from Mrs. Burns. So how go ahead. Oh, we have there you go. How will you track attendance through the online school? That is a awesome question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right now we don't have a measure or a way to to track if you logged into your computer every day. Um, so you can sleep in. Um, you can really access your schoolwork anytime during the day that you want. This is really going to be a challenge for your independent learning skills to be able to uh, schedule your time wisely during the school day so that you have time to finish your work on whatever timeline your teacher has asked. Uh, so right now, we don't have a way to track if you are in school um, as it pertains to an online environment. Uh, how will work be graded? Okay, so you're going to have due dates for your assignments and as activities come through. So keep that in mind as you're planning your, your time. So um, our focus really is on you accomplishing the, the tasks and the getting through the content the teachers bring to you. Um, on the time frame that they've set forth. Um, so really the attendance issue isn't something we're going to be able to track. How will work be graded? Um, I can say through the fourth through 12th grade level, you're going to be able to submit things either online or if, if you have limited access, we'll have plan B and C available for you on an individual basis to see what best works for you. But if you know there, there's some things that you can complete through the office suite that may be a, a survey that turns into an assessment or if you submit something by email to your teacher they're going to um, look at that and take care of that and grade it as they would if you were in school um, so i'm hoping that answers your question there in the k-3 through environment uh, we're really focusing on the skills that you have you're working towards and you have a skills-based report card that goes along with that um, and the the lexi activities and the st math activities will will support that uh, i don't see any other hands mm -hmm. up mr ramsey did you have anything else you wanted to add regarding those questions or maybe you have other questions to answer um i don't think so i think i think that's been pretty thorough i'm just going through and, and maintaining the muting just so you know matt from this side um, how that's working. Uh, I think I think that's good. I, I would recommend that the students be contacting their teachers on a regular basis. This is, a, as Matt said, this is a learning curve for everybody. So it's important for the students 
to communicate with the teachers to let them know what is and is not working with instruction um, through the online um, approach. So that's the only way that they're going to know um, what, what is and what is not working. And it's the only way that they will know um, how to make adjustments. So don't, don't be hesitant to appropri appropriately email your teachers, let them know, hey, you made this, you know, you issued this assignment. It's, it, it's very difficult on my inter internet connection um, and maybe help us troubleshoot better ways to deliver um, given the uh, infrastructure we have in place in our region. Okay, Mrs. Wolf. She had her hand raised. I want to call on her, see how this goes. Go. Okay, hello everyone. I just, uh, actually Mr. Ramsey kind of said what I, my question was about towards the end of what he said, but I was just going to uh, encourage the kids and reinforce um, if they can check grades four through 12, if they can actually check their email at least once a day, that's going to be a lot of communication coming in there directly to the kids. So that would be great if they just remember check in with email, they've read it and we can find a starting point that way. But it's great to see everyone. And I was going to mention for those, I, I have a few people that are texting my personal cell phone. If you can't find how to raise your hand, you just have to like look at the bottom and hover over or click on where it says participants. And if you open up the participant menu, you've got a lot of choices that you can do there. You can um, do your raise your hand or turn your microphone off and stuff like that. So I'll put a thumbs up and see if that goes up there. So that Something was it. Else I forgot to add at the fourth through sixth grade levels, we're really working on a pass fail basis. Um, so don't worry about grades as much fourth through sixth grade. Um, it's going to be in a pass fail basis. We know this, we're really focused on skills really at that level more than anything. Um, and, and that's something that we're per permitted to do through uh, what PD is set forth. Um, I saw Steve Ellison. Yeah, Steve Ellison. Mr. Ellison, uh, if you have a question, you can unmute and ask. Uh, yeah, I just really wanted to point something out. I went over with my son, Andrew, and was looking at his email. And I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that when you go into the email, there's a focused inbox as well as a other inbox. And you want to make sure and check both of those because there were unread messages, you know, in that other location that he hadn't actually viewed or seen because he was just viewing the focused inbox. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. And Steve, can you clarify if if I'm understanding that correct? Is that is that only on when you're checking on like a mobile device, or is that also when you're logged in to like a laptop? Uh, that was logged into a laptop when you're in the web interface. Uh, there's the focused inbox. It's something Microsoft rolled out. We've had this problem at the university where I work as well. Uh, you know, messages will go into the other uh, box there, and so people don't actually see them. They're just looking at their focused inbox. It tries to like automatically select what's important to you or whatever, but it doesn't do a very good job. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ellison. Uh, there was a Katie out there with a question with her hand up. I don't see the hand up now. Maybe they're okay. okay. There's one more question there. We'll get to. Okay. I'll, I'll answer right here. All right. So let's see. This is tough track and three different things going on at once here. Let me tell you that. Uh, school year planning. All right. So I um, you know, Mr. Splain, there, there are a number of other hands up. Do you want to address those or do you want to wait? Well, I'm looking for them. I, am I missing? I, I, oh, I wait. see that uh, Sarah Johnson has a question. Uh, where was that at? I see. Uh, Sarah Johnson. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hi. <laughs> Mr. Ramsey, I had messaged you last week. We have our own computers, and you said that there's licenses so they can get Office 365. And I don't think that I've received any instruction on how to do that. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so through through our program, and I'd have to log in to take a look at that. Maybe that's something we can ask the tech department to, to send out via email. 
um, you, there's actually a download option once you log into Office 365, which allows you to install on your local machine. Um, I haven't done that in several months, but I will, I will look into that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. We'll see if we can get some instructions out. And one other note with that, um, from experience, the, the license is assigned to um, the email address, the school email address that you use to download it. So when you're using, say if you have multiple users using the Office uh, file, it's going to automatically save to that user's OneDrive. Um, you'd have to switch, purposely switch the, the login, switch the account information um, if you have multiple people using that that computer, uh, say you have two or three kids at home. If, so, if I can make a su suggestion there, Mr. Splain, <clears throat> one of the ways we deal with it in the Ramsey household with the 10,000 kids we have um, is if, if you open up incognito windows, um, that, that will solve that problem with at least two kids. So one can be logged in in the normal, one can be logged in the incognito, and they won't uh, interfere with each other. Okay. I thought I saw Mrs. Cochran on here somewhere. If she has anything to add, I know she is well versed in that. She's feel free to jump in and add anything, Mrs. Cochran, if you have something to add. Go ahead, Mrs. Cochran. We have a set of instructions that I will forward to Mr. Ramsey to be dispersed unless you want. Uh, if, if there's a contact list or something somewhere, let me know or I'll just forward it to Mr. Ramsey. Yeah, that, that'll work out well. I'll go ahead and once I get that, I will distribute that um, to everybody at the high school. And if you could send it to Mrs. Um, Burns as well, and then that way we can distribute it to our um, various student lists. Uh, Mr. McDonald just shared that link with you, Mr. Ramsey. Perfect, thank you. Michael Brewer, I see you have a question, go ahead. Um, this is Hayden Brewer. I'm wondering if we are still receiving the college credits for this year in dual enrollment classes. Good question. Good question. I'm glad you asked that because I didn't have that in my notes and I should have. Um, the colleges we're working with are being very responsive and flexible as to what we're doing. Um, there's going to be no issue with you guys earning that credit. Uh, for most of the courses you guys have the seat hours in already. Uh, they're, they are somewhat following our lead as to what we're going to provide to your kids. I think there was one class that there was a question on. Your teacher will be in touch with you regarding anything specific to that. But there will still is, will be work to do, uh, but, but you'll be in good shape to complete the course and receive credit. And Mr. Ramsey, if you have anything to add, feel free to add. Yeah, just, just as a point of clarification, so the, the, the only course that hasn't met the seat time requirement is would be the second half of the senior English course. And that's because it's a whole nother three credit course. So Mrs. J's senior English, I think it's uh, lit at this point. Um, they, they still have some more hours to get, but either way, we're gonna be fine. And yes, I applaud uh, UPB and Penn Highlands for working with us. They've been great. All right, uh, so. I think we're okay right now. So um, a couple things going forward. Uh, the governor, as you know, closed schools and in his, at his directive along with the cooperation of PDE and as well from the, the bill that was signed into law, I think it was Act 13 that the governor signed last week. Um, I, I need to give our legislature a lot of credit for being so responsive to so many different needs we had as school districts in Pennsylvania. Uh, the 180 day requirement is not going to be an issue. Uh, I know a lot of questions. Are we going to make up the days? Uh, our focus is, is, is and still will be providing the best education we possibly can for the rest of the school year, whatever it looks like. Uh, we know that March 13th, our last day when you were in school was uh, day 133. Um, 
if we continue through April with our April 2nd restart date and get go through May as normal, we add 37 days to that. So we're, we're getting closer to that 180. Um, so what we have to look at is really, uh, are there days we wanna reschedule uh, over Easter break? If, if that's a, a need that we see as a benefit, and I can't say that we do right now, um, or how far can we go into June? Um, going into June would be a consideration of a, a con contracts that we have with employees, um, but I'm pretty safe in saying that we're not gonna be going to school on June 30th. The, the school code allows you to continue school through June and also go to school one Saturday a month um, through that time. So I, I'm not gonna announce any plans to go to school on the weekend in, in April or May. Um, I'm not thinking that'd be a popular move in our school or my household. So I, I don't see that happening. Um, but we, we do have time to get in 180 days um, and it's gonna be using this online schooling. The, the days we're working through online schooling are gonna count towards your instructional time. Uh, so next week we have a board meeting. We'll talk about any calendar changes with our school board if they see the need to do that. Um, possibly into mid-June, maybe the last time we have to think about going to school. Um, I think it'd be the, if we see the opportunity to get kids back into classrooms, that would be a positive. Um, so hopefully we, we can do that and uh, there'll be a few scenarios I'll work through with our board to hopefully see that happen knowing that we can do that. Uh, question. Um, I think as you previously saw, uh, there's no PSSAs or keystones to be administered this year. AP exams are going to be available. We do have an AP calculus class and that would be something available online and I'm not sure exactly how that would look but that would be an option for our AP Calc kids. Um, the keystone exams, that there is a connection there with the graduation requirement but it, um, if you're not aware the graduation requirements are going to be changing uh, for the class of 2022, 2022. Mm -hmm. um, so that may be a consideration for some of those kids. Uh, but I, I can't say for sure now if we mm -hmm. know that our kids that are missing the Keystone exams this spring, if they're going to be asked or expected to take them in the fall. We don't, we don't know that yet. Uh, I think I mentioned Governor Wolf's Closure right now is through the end of April. If anything changes from that, um, that would be the first indication that we could start planning to reopen schools. And as they originally had planned, that we'd have a couple of days of preparation to get back into school. But uh, we know our direction for the rest of April. Um, I don't see anything changing through that time. Um, and as we continue this, we really have no option to open up our buildings, that we'd have no option to add any activities. So unfortunately, every time that that closure statement increases, um, the activities during that time are either gonna be canceled or postponed. Uh, so I know Mr. Burris has been working to, in the school calendar on, on our website to cancel games. Uh, we just don't know if anything's gonna happen for the spring yet. Um, our hope is at minimum, we can offer a graduation ceremony for our seniors. Uh, report cards, if you need your, Report card mailed out, please let us know. Uh, I know report cards were sent out for the younger levels, I think last week, high school report cards are available on CSIU. If you have your access, you're all set. If you need access, please contact Mrs. Strait. She can help you get access so you can track grades, track progress uh, right from CSIU online. Mm -hmm. The elementary is just through the portal. Through the portal. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're just going to be mailing out only on request basis. Uh, yeah. So tomorrow uh, we, we have our distribution of technology at the elementary. We went through the first wave last Friday at the high school, which I think that went pretty well. So we have materials all set up. Um, Mrs. Burns and Mrs. Mary set up about six tables worth of materials in our elementary cafeteria. We've got you set up alphabetically and we have time frames starting at 10 o'clock tomorrow to work through two o'clock to hand out devices as needed and materials. So like your math book, yes. notebooks, right? The teachers put together a nice packet of stuff. Uh, for the kids to take home to make sure they have all the materials necessary. Um, so that would be a, a minimum as a, as a pickup. Uh, 
And if you have a question on the time frame, please email Mrs. Burns or Mrs. Mary. Um, and we'll make, be sure we'll get stuff to you as, as soon as we can if you're not able to make it tomorrow. Uh, but we'll have our goal right now is to get one technology uh, device in every household. Um, as we accomplish that, we'll, we'll have more waves of technology that Mr. McDonald, and Mr. Kuvert are, are getting ready for us. Uh, but that as a minimum, we want to make sure everyone has something. At the primary levels, kindergarten through third, uh, laptops, if you have those at home, they work. But we'll be handing out iPads at the district level. Um, and then uh, with that, uh, we'll get through that round, see where we're at, and then um, add on to it as needed. And we, as you go through it, you'll see we're tracking who has what. You'll have charging cords. You'll have the device, and we'll give you instructions to connect to a home internet, um, con directions to contact our, our helpline, which you see on the screen now. We have a phone number set up and also a, an email address. Um, and also, uh, we have damage, accidental damage coverage if something does happen to a laptop uh, that will be available. Uh, and if something does happen, we'll, we'll have replacement devices available that we'll have to trade out when the time comes. Hopefully, that, that's not an issue. Yeah. Um, the initial logins we provided to get online, uh, I'm sorry, to log into a laptop was incorrect, as well as the technology helpline, the first phone number we shared was incorrect. So we did send corrections out. Um, we did update that. The phone, the correct phone number is included there. Um, so please make note of that. And again, if you do get advice, you'll have that information shared with you. Uh, as I spoke about before, our planning for instruction really surrounds our ability to uh, understand the access that our students have to the internet. Uh, if you live in certain places, you may have cable internet through Xfinity or through Spectrum. If you don't have Infinity or Spectrum, but you live in an Infinity or Spectrum area, there, is an, um, there are opportunities available through them to either have free or discounted service. Uh, your, your phone, if you have a Verizon phone, I just realized this week that Verizon opened up more uh, high-speed internet through your hotspot, your, on your phone's hotspot if you have unlimited data and if you have the hotspot feature enabled. Um, and additionally, we're going to purchase some T-Mobile hotspots for student use, which that uses the cellular data. So if your phone works right now to work as a hotspot, or if you have DSL service, the T-Mobile hotspot would work in the same way or the same level of service. Uh, so there, the best service you'd have in an area is through either Comcast or through Xfinity. After that, if you have um, a hotspot or if you have DSL, those are your next best options. I see a couple questions forming, and I'll get to those in a second. Um, something else we're working on is expanding our building level access to shoot our, our Wi-Fi signal outside the building. So in Eldred, if you're in the preschool lot, we're hoping you can access a guest network from our preschool lot, or if you're at the high school, it would be in the backside behind the shop. Uh, we're testing out the strength there. We've got to add some new equipment uh, outside the preschool to enable that to work uh, seamlessly, hopefully. And then you can sit in your cars, or at least away from people, and, and access our, our network that way as well for free. I see um, Mrs. Beaver has a question. Uh, so go ahead, unmute, and ask your question, Mrs. Beaver. I was just wondering if the tech helpline is only available for students that have devices from the school or if a student that has their own device has a problem with the Office 365, if they could still call that. Yeah, go ahead and call. Um, if they don't have the answer, they'll put you in contact with someone that does. I know we have a few like Office 365 experts on hand. Um, I know Mrs. Cochran is well-versed, Mrs. Farmelo, Mrs. Wolf. We have a number of teachers that understand the ins and outs of that. So definitely if you have a question, call or email, if, even if it's with one of the uh, resources we use, because I know the, they, the technology team can help with certain things, but they may not be familiar with the resources, but they can get you in touch with a resource. If it's a resource specific to a course, definitely call your, or email your teacher to let them know what your question is. All right, I've got a question or a hand up from uh, Megan, who's on an iPhone. If you want to ask your question, go ahead. Um, 
Mr. Ramsey, this is Megan Panagetti, Darton's mom and Harley's mom. Um, I actually work for Verizon and that 15 gigabytes of data is not just for unlimited customers, just so everybody knows. Everybody is getting a bonus 15 gigabytes on hotspot and people that only have like a two, four or eight gigabyte plan. Good to know, right? That's great to know. Thanks for sharing. If you have any other details regarding what Verizon can do or is doing, please let me know. I searched yesterday and was unsuccessful beyond finding the, the additional uh, data that was provided to us. And anybody, if they have issues with anything Verizon related, can message me either through Facebook or if they're friends with one of my kids, they can always message me through there as well. I do know that most, if not all, of our cell uh, plans are through Verizon Wireless. Uh, their help uh, chat features online that you can access are, are pretty helpful and they're pretty responsive to, to working through your issues with you. So that's, the, that's really what I wanted to get through related to us. I did have some things on there, uh, a couple of notes, things that have changed statewide. Uh, there was a law adopted to move the primary elections. Uh, if you haven't heard yet, there's a census coming and that's been out in the news for a long time. And um, if you, I, we completed our survey in our household last week, it takes about five minutes online to get through it. Um, it's important that we have counts of everybody uh, because the funding and services for our areas is gonna be based upon the, uh, a baseline of what this census provides. And then they do a projection of what the, uh, population will be ongoing when they're years outside the census. So please make sure you participate in that. Um, and specific to Pennsylvania, the real ID due date, I think it was in October, but they've extended that a year because of the shutdown or because of the closure and everything we're going through. And also tax day is postponed as well. Uh, a couple other questions. Oh, okay. Um, a clarification, trying to streamline what we're handing out with technology. So let's say you have a, a third grader and a seventh grader that needs a device. Right now, we'll give you just a laptop just to make sure we can get all the devices that are in the, the tip top shape. We have, we actually, we had to order iPad charging cords. Um, so we may be limited on iPads to start with. So we're going to limit what we hand out with iPads to start. Um, it'll be based on how many charging cords we have. That's it. All right. All right. Any, oh, okay. And anything that you would have used at the elementary level uh, on an iPad works also on a laptop using uh, the browser, which Chrome works pretty well. Yes. Chrome, Chrome. Probably Chrome is the best browser that uh, works on most, if not all the uh, resources we have. Okay. Stacy, I see you have a question. Go ahead. This is for Mrs. Burns if she's there. I have a young man in special ed in eighth grade. I was just wondering, like, how is this going to work for him? So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of different directions you can go with that answer. I, it really is dependent on the kid's need, but I would ask you to do, uh, if you want to give Mrs. Burns a call or email, if you want to call her tomorrow, she can talk you through concerns you may have. Uh, if there's things that we've missed in our plan, we want to make sure we, we catch everything, but definitely um, plan to be in touch with Mrs. Burns, and I'm sure she probably knows. Yeah, I'll, I'll, can I hear me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So all, a letter went out in the mail, Stacy. You should be getting that um, in regards to special education specifically. Um, also, like he said, call me, email me, we can talk through it. All teachers that are teaching any level or any student are also in contact via email. So your child's teacher should have been in contact or will be in contact about activities that they can be doing. Um, but more on a specific basis, certainly give me a call or email and we'll touch base about specifics. Are there any other questions? Um, if you have one, please raise your hand. <laughs> I've gotten through my information. I wanna hear what else we need to know about from you. Hundred and seventy participants. I really had no idea what to expect. I was hoping that thirty would be a good showing. Um, so this is going to serve as a trial run for future meetings. 
and as well as our board meeting next week, which uh, will be a, a new learning experience with different features we have to provide there. Uh, Steve Jackson, you have a question, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for doing this, guys. I was wondering if you have now a plan to continue these on, if there's a set time uh, or date just to kind of keep everybody going in the uh, communi communicating uh, through this time. Yeah, my plan to, to do this, uh, my first goal is to get through this one first, see how it went. Um, I don't know if there's a, I know I did get a few contacts that a later time may be better for some people because of work schedules. Um, so yeah, we definitely want to keep this going. Maybe we'll do it a little bit later in the day to accommodate some people's schedules. Uh, but I, I see this because it's so well attended. I think this is something we definitely want to keep doing um, for our benefit and for yours. Um, I want to thank you, all of you folks for putting in the time today to, to listen and participate. Oh, I'm sorry. I, tax day is July, not June. I'll fix that. Matt, while you're you're fixing that, I just have a general comment. Yep. Uh, I want to say that at a time when a lot of communities are kind of in an uproar and dissatisfied and a lot of complaints, we've gotten a lot of positive support from the folks in our community. So I want to thank you all as parents um, and community members for being patient with us. So this has been new. We're working on very limited information a lot of the times. Um, I don't know if you really realize this or not, but there's the schools are not notified in advance of any public announcements by the PDE or the governor. So it's, it's kind of at last second, we hear at the exact same time you do. Um, so I just want to say thank you for, again, being flexible, uh, accommodating, and, and somewhat compassionate to us as, as we, um, as we kind of ramp up and, and, and get things going and keep things moving here on our end. So thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Ramsey. And just as an example of that, on the Friday the 13th, go figure, when we, uh, when the governor announced the, the school closure, we had kids knowing it and telling us that what was going on before we realized what was happening. You had to be online and be watching to see that happen. Uh, but yes, I do want to kind of state the same sentiment, Mr. Ramsey. We've had quite a quite an effort trying to get all these things prepared and get lunches going and, and get things planned out. And it's been quite an effort from all of our staff. So I do want to thank all of our staff. And I want to thank everyone for their patience during this time. Uh, we, we know there's going to be challenges. We just ask for your patience and we're going to do our best to work through everything we can work through. Um, and if we have anything else that we've missed, please keep in touch with us. Let us know what you need. Um, I, one, one thing I meant to share, which I forgot, maybe we'll do that next time. There's a McKean County resource map that they put together uh, that shows all the different things that are happening in McKean County as resources for students and for families. Um, and so that would be, be a big benefit. Uh, tomorrow, um, if you're part of the elementary pickup, you're gonna see bags of food that are available. We've had that uh, where we sent food out to uh, families and kids in need on long weekends and whatnot. But right now we can't hold that here any longer. We're gonna make sure it gets out to where it's needed. So feel free as you come through, if you need a bag, take a bag. Um, it'll be there um, until it's gone. Um, and if we need to deliver it ourselves, we'll do that at the, at the point in time if we do have any left. Um, last chance for questions. I'm seeing none. Uh, Andrew, Andrew's iPhone. Oops. Uh, yes, um, for those parents that are working during the day, is this going to be set up so that the kids have to get online throughout the day and actually view classes, or how's that going to work? Uh, do you mind if I take this one, Mr. Splain? Yeah, go ahead. So the teachers are being encouraged um, to provide a, about a week at a time. So that way there's some flexibility. We are discouraging, except for special circumstances, dual enrollment uh, classes in particular, um, to keep uh, what we would call synchronous video to a minimum. So like this, where you all have to be on the video at the exact same time. So we're gonna do our best to provide uh, an, activities and instruction 
and give families some autonomy and when that is done so they can download off peak hours, et cetera, et cetera. Um, please know that, that we have discussed that we, we know we still have a lot of families that are working. Um, and after our, you know, after five o'clock, it might be when they get more, the kiddos get more support. We're aware of that. It will take teachers a little bit of time to figure out each individual circumstance and start um, delivering more efficiently. So uh, again, that's why we ask that the kiddos um, email their, their teachers regularly to say, hey, you know, just so you know, this is my context and, um, you know, I can do this, but this is more of a challenge, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, we're going to try to be as accommodating as we can to that. Um, and, and that's a great question. So, you know, just, just do your best to keep, keep us informed. If you have any feedback uh, on how easy or difficult it was to connect to this, this meeting, please email me. Or if you want to give a call tomorrow, you can do so. Um, I'd be interesting from the user view how this went. And if I, I see people use different devices, um, if uh, I see some phones, I'm not sure if there's any uh, tablets and I know there's laptops. So if you have any input on what worked or what didn't work, um, we tried to make this as streamlined as possible, but I, I see even the settings I thought I preset didn't really hold true. Um, and I also realized that once you have multiple meetings set up, you have to make sure you get into the right meeting first. Otherwise, you're going to be late to your own meeting. Um, but I thank you again for your, your participation in this. Thank you for your questions. And uh, stay safe out there and stay home. Have a good day.